Hello, hello, hello. This is Attorney Mike Gravel coming to you from Chicago, as usual. And it's ladies' night. It's ladies' night here at Law Talk with Mike. I didn't plan this. I did not plan this. But the clips I have are from some of my favorite lady judges, namely Judge Webster, Judge Bryant, and Judge Manning. Let's get it started, shall we? Now state your full name, sir. Carlos of the family Durham. That's not your name. And the only person I'm going to see today is Carlos Nazreen Durham. Lorenzo Durham. If that's not this gentleman, I'm not going to have name, name. I'm not, This is short, but it's fantastic. I'm not going to handle the case. If that is not this gentleman, the person my on my docket is Carlos Narenzo Durham. If this is not Carlos Narenzo Durham, I'm not going to handle the case. Let's try again. State your name, your legal name, government name. My legal name is not a government name, and it's spelled it. All right, well, we're going to proceed. I'm going to wait for Mr. Durham to come, and then we'll proceed with Mr. Durham. Deputy? <laughs> she said not but enough of that crap. Deputy? The government didn't give me a name, man. Deputy? Okay. Well, I'm going to remove the jail because this isn't Mr. Carlos uh, Durham. Uh, that's on my dock, and I'm going to remove it. And then this person can, I don't know why they put this person in front of the camera, <laughs> but I'm going to remove the jail. All right. They can have a great day. I love that part. I don't know why they put him there. She knows damn well that it's him, but but it's it's funny. It is. All right. Um, I'm ready. I, I I don't know what to do. Okay. Um let's go. I'm ready on Mr. Murad, are you yeah, doing exactly. the people with the plus signs? Oh, let's bring in Mr. Torkmani, who you all wait, wait Judge, can I have can I have one more minute on him? I, I gotta I still gotta get off and talk to him a little bit. Oh, well then <laughs> you get your colleague so she could do these other I just left this little last bit in here. We're about done uh, to, to show that she really did move on. And you'll see uh, Attorney Murad, who who I like a lot. I've seen a bunch of doing this. Um, he had the good sense to stay out of the way. He could see it. You can see an expression on his face. He's like, I'm not touching this. <laughs> He's a wise man. Other cases. And then I'm you will talk. I already unlocked it, George, if you wanted to knock that one out real quick. This just getting another date. Well, I, I guess. Can you please state your name for the record, ma'am? Do you not? Okay, thank you. Okay, Mr. Patterson. Okay, we first of all we start with Darren Patterson, who just gets gets every uh, every criminal in the state of Kansas somehow goes through his office, <laughs> but he manages to duck this. Bottom center is uh, is Billy Jack Daniels. Yes, Billy Jack is back. Last we saw him, and I couldn't, I didn't have time to go grab the clip. But the last we saw him, he had he had some some stuff, and uh, and he just said, you know, judge, put me in jail. I, I'm not going to get this done. I'm, I'm not going to be able to comply with this probation. He was really, he was super chill about it. <laughs> well, oddly enough, Billy Jack has continued to have problems since. Judge, I believe Billy Daniels is payer peer case. Oh. Oh yes, after he failed to appear on me, I do believe. Uh, we're on the record in twenty twenty two TR one three eight four State of Kansas versus Billy Jack Daniels. The state appears by and through Jared Regeer. Mr. Daniels appears in person and pro se. Okay, you could not find two characters farther apart. Then Mr. Regeer and Billy Jack Daniels. <laughs> it's fantastic. Mr. Daniels, you're not usually one to skip court on me, but you did October 24th. Then you came December 2nd in front of Judge Hart after your warrant was issued. I had ordered that your bench warrant have a bond of $458. Do you know why I did that? 
Yeah, because I owed $458, but I was actually incarcerated on October 24th whenever I supposedly missed court. I was trying to get in Butler County. I was trying to get taken to court while I was there. They said that I didn't show up on the docket or nothing, so they couldn't take me. So then they put out a warrant. Huh? You're saying Butler County had you in court the day of October 24th? They had you yes, in ma'am. They had you in court or they had you in jail? They had me in jail. What were you in jail for? Uh, I think it was, uh, shit, I don't know. I don't remember if I missed court or if, if it was from my other case that I was on. Okay. I didn't notice that the first time. He, he, he just said to the judge with a straight face after she asked him, what are you in jail for? He says, shit, I don't know. <laughs> Billy Jack Daniels does it again. All right. Well, what for whatever. So you were in jail, but you still ended up missing court. Yep. And, and then Judge Hart released you on an OR bond. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Because I was in jail at the time. So he went ahead and released me. But Your Honor, you still haven't it? paid anything on your case, right? Well, no, I don't have a job right now because I was in jail and lost my job. Now, that was back in October. I know when it was. You haven't been able to find a job since October? Nope. It's not easy. Everybody it's says, not? no, everybody says they can't find people to work and stuff. Well, yeah, I, I, mean, I can put an application all over the place and can't get a job. So, no, that's what I can't go anywhere without seeing the help wanted sign. They're everywhere. Yeah. All right. So, Mr. Regeer, were you going to say something? Uh, yes, Your Honor. For the edification of the court, I do have a note from a first appearance hearing back in December. It would appear that Ms. Norris was the prosecuting attorney at the time where the defendant did appear in custody. It would appear that uh, Mr. Patterson was reappointed and the bond was converted to a 458 OR bond. And it would also appear that that does continue to be the outstanding balance on this case, though I'm sure the, the court clerk can confirm that. Mr. Daniels, do you want Mr. Patterson reappointed for any purpose? No, I don't need him. I just need to get an extension or whatever for a month or so so I can get to pay. Okay. Uh-huh. And and I'm not I'm not going to keep Mr. Patterson on the case because that just adds more expense to this young man unless I waive it. And uh, it's just a matter of paying. He either he owes the money, just pay it or serve your time. But that is that is my understanding, Your Honor. Um, I believe this case was previously set for pay or appear back in October, at which point the defendant failed to appear and the court did order um, the what? bench warrant. And actually, he had to pay or appear also back September 12th. He still had a balance of 458. He requested additional time. So I've given you, Mr. Daniels, additional time since September 12th, actually since you were sentenced August 8th. You were sentenced August 8th with the balance of 458. And uh, so then we came back September 12th. You hadn't paid anything. We came back October 24th. You hadn't paid anything and you failed to appear. We came back December 2nd. You hadn't paid anything. We came back February 27th today and you haven't paid anything. So what's going to be different since August 1st? Well, I'm supposed to have a job coming up. I mean, that's all I can say. You know, I'm, it, it hasn't started yet, so, but it's supposed to. I mean, warmer weather's coming in and stuff, so. You couldn't make even a good faith effort in all of these months, six months or whatever it's been, even a I'm, $25 between, payment? Between rent, bills, food, you know, I mean, gas, groceries, everything else. I mean, I'm pretty well behind quite a bit as it is. Do you, you know, smoke? Do you smoke? Huh? You smoke? Yeah. yeah, when I can. You yeah, those blue? things are pretty expensive, aren't they? Yeah. You could have been paying that towards your case. Yeah. Probably could have had that paid off long by now, just using your cigarette money. Where are you living these days? What town? I live with my parents. What, huh? what, what town is that? Is that Latham? Yes, ma'am. Can't get a job on the oil rig or the fast food or anything like that? Well, I can, but that requires me driving around, too, and you guys don't want me doing that. Don't want you breaking any laws. Get your license reinstated. Well, I mean, I owe about a couple thousand dollars on that right now, you know. 
How are you doing on your felony case? Well, um, the one that I have with you out there in the other county, I'm going to call my attorney again today because I never have received another Zoom invite on it. Uh, it's coming up here pretty quick, but I'm not exactly sure what day, so I have to call him and find out. And the other one? The other one, uh, I missed court on it last month because they didn't send me a Zoom invite, and I'm trying to get the attorney to get it lifted or whatever. If not, then I'm going to have to confirm myself in or whatever. I've talked to the bond lady and stuff, but the people I talked to at the jail said they can't tell me if I have an actual active warrant or not. I just got to come in and turn myself in. So my attorney said to let him know or whatever what I could find out this week, and he'd go from there. Have you ever had a failure to appear? Possibly. Okay, you've got how many attorneys? Now? Who do you have? Watts, and who's the one in Greenwood? Um, I'd have to look him up on my email again. I don't remember his name. Something tells uh, you not staying in touch with him then. Okay, in Greenwood County, you're looking at distribution of heroin, and it's, it's okay. not heroin. Well, that's what it says. Well, that's good because that's not what it was. Okay. Well, that may be one where they, I don't know. But that's what it says. And then some other opiate, opium, or narcotic. I was just waiting for him to say it wasn't heroin. It was meth. Drug, which is usually meth, but it could be cocaine or something else. Possession of marijuana, two or more prior convictions, flee or elude, drive while suspended, use possessed with intent to use drug paraphernalia into the human body. And that, oh, let's see. Now I can't tell when you're supposed to be back on that. Is that the one you have? Did you say you have an active warrant on that one? Is that what you told me? Well I don't, I don't know if I have a warrant on it or not. Did you fail to come to court? Yeah, but my attorney was supposed to be trying to get it taken care of and everything because they never sent me a Zoom invite <laughs> to go to court. They have all my other ones. They did back in December 22nd. Did you think about maybe attorney, calling to ask what the Zoom when, invite was? When, when I called, the attorney said I'd already missed it. Okay. Just like this morning, I didn't receive no Zoom invite this morning. I had to call my attorney to find out, and they said I had already missed court. She went ahead and sent me the Zoom invite, but somehow they didn't have my email for this time, okay. but they've sent it every other time. Okay, and then your Butler County case that you think you may have a warrant for as well is it's that possession of opiate, opium, narcotic, possession of marijuana, possession with intent to use, paraphernalia, driving while suspended, Insurance violation, liability insurance. So you have, do you just have the three cases open now? Yes, ma'am. No, well, that's plenty. And your honor? Yes. What What do you suggest, Mr. Regeer? I love that pause. She's just like, I, I, I'm just flabbergasted with the stupid. I, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Well, I'm assuming that the court um, is referring to 22 CR 388 um, involving this particular defendant, if I'm not mistaken, for the other Butler County case. I had the number up, but I just closed it out. I'm sorry. It's uh, on the felony drug one I just mentioned. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, that's probably um, um, I'm showing that um, that case was previously before the court um, in December of last year when the defendant failed to appear on that case. Um, it would appear that... Um, yes. I, well, I can't really say as far as any Greenwood County cases are concerned, but given the, um, the continued... Um, outstanding balance on this case, um, I might respectfully inquire as if it would be appropriate for this case to go to collections, but of course, um, if the, whatever the court rules on that particular point or any other issues in this matter, which I am on, I will respectfully um, submit to those orders. 
Yeah, that well, was good. I could on one hand just say, you've got bigger fish to fry, Mr. Daniels, and yeah, we'll send this to civil collections and close your case. But I, you know, this is a second driving well suspended, and you've got other driving well suspendeds tagged onto those felonies. I don't know that I need to let you off the hook quite that easily. I can't believe in the last six months you haven't worked at all. No. You haven't? No, between being in and out of jail and everything else, no. Then who's buying those cigarettes for you? Nobody right now. That's what I said. I mean, pretty well behind on everything. Uh, my guess is this guy's dealing drugs and has plenty of money, but of course, you know, none of it's tra tracked or traceable. You do know this is a Class A misdemeanor under Kansas law? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to set this over to May 1st at 9 a.m. May 1st. You must May be day. present at the courthouse. Somebody record this for me. Can't be by Zoom. It has to be present at the courthouse. And if you don't have this paid in full, I'm going to be uh, considering this a motion to revoke your non-reporting probation. So I'll give you a chance. I've already had six months to get something paid on it, but that'll give you a couple more months. That 90 days, I think. Yeah, maybe not that long. But anyway, plenty of time, Mr. Daniels. You healthy young individual that should be able to get a job. So do you have any questions about that? No, I'll be there May 1st. Okay. I am. Oh, yeah. It's get, it's getting warmer. You're supposed to get a job. <laughs> raise, raise your hand if you think that's going to happen. <laughs> Thank you. All Hopefully right. you'll have it paid, but I want you to hear whether you have it paid or not. Mr. Regeer, any questions or comments? Uh, Your Honor, is the court rescinding its prior order about this case being sent to collections, or is the court still proceeding there? The court is still proceeding. It hasn't been. She didn't make that order. She contemplated it. He, he does this a lot. I've actually come around to him. He, I think he's good in a lot of ways, but he, he needs to just tone some of this stuff down. Been sent to collections, has it? Yeah, I do not believe so, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'll, I'll quit talking. I uh, do not believe so, Your Honor, but I believe the court had considered the possibility earlier in today's hearing. I had considered it, but I'm not going to. Thank you, Your Honor. We recalled it from collections, I think. February 17th, I think. So he, he needs to get this taken care of. He's able to. Stop it, Maria. All right. Then I'm going to consider that a motion to revoke probation if he doesn't get that taken care of or show me good faith or show me why he hadn't been able to work. Mm -hmm. I do want to make first Mr. time. Daniels, you're excused at this time, but word of advice, get a hold of your attorneys, get your warrants taken care of, get to court. Okay, you've got a lot of things on the table. And you're, Stop you're selling drugs. Self in jeopardy by not coming to court. I know. All right. We'll be All in right. recess at this time. Darren Patterson's just thinking, I'm so glad I'm not representing this guy anymore. He will before it's over. Oh, D O W E L L. No further contact with witnesses. Karen Thurman, T H U R M A N, and Isaiah Connor, C O N N E R. He'd have an ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24 hour curfew, court, lawyer, medical, and work. 
Sir, you have to supply the name of your employer, proof of employment, a schedule, the exact location you'll be working. You have to supply that to the ankle monitoring company and to your lawyer who then can supply it to the state. 25,000 count one, 10,000 count two. Best of luck to you, sir. Thank you, Judge. It's always a pleasure, Judge. Good to see you, Mr. Hudson. All right. Thank you, uh, Ms. Project. All right. Let's see. Freddie Caldwell. All right. Let's see. Michael Bateman. Uh, 13, Mr. Jerome here. There. Hold on a second. Got to see your lawyer. All right. What about uh, Ms. Rosenhoover? Or it's going to be Ms. Rondon for uh, Martavius Gay? Is that you, Ms. Rondon? No, Judge. Your Honor. That's not me. Oh, Good okay. afternoon. Good evening. Uh, Michael Bernard on behalf of Mr. Gay. Okay. Montavious Gay? Yes. There you go. All right. Got two two cases for Mr. Gay's position 11, position 12. 2 2 CP 214 241. 95 days without Good indictment. Thing. No bond as of November the 26th Aww. for aggravated assault and battery. Thank you, Chris. Uh, 2 2 CP 214 243. 95 days without indictment. No bond as of 11 26 for aggravated assault. Free trial. <laughs> In regards to Mr. Gay. Wait, the, the, I did see this this much and uh, listen to this record. And and I, I'm impressed with how, how the defense attorney makes a straight face argument after that. 19 prior arrests currently on probation for burglary sentence 123-19. Um, for five years, also for burglary sentence one. 12, 16, five years confinement, 15 years probation, open case 22 CP 214-21238, firearm by convicted felon, theft by shoplifting, three FTAs, prior convictions, other convictions for burglary and theft by receiving stolen property, two arrests for probation violation, nothing further. Have you ever had a failure to appear? Possibly. Uh, yes, Your Honor, before you is Mr. Gay. Um, he is a 29-year-old uh, um, um, resident of Atlanta, been here his whole life. Um, he's got two daughters that he um, supports, eight and uh, nine years old, uh, graduated from Thero High School. Uh, before he was arrested, he was actually about to start working as a construction worker. Yeah. Uh, but before Talking that, he was uh, a DHL <laughs> uh, driver as well as a driver for Amazon. Judge, Everyone check you're starting a job uh, on your bingo card. Judge, the <laughs> first aggravated assault case, um, we believe that the victim does not want to prosecute. Um, it was a situation where um, the victim did not want my client to leave, began to strike him. Uh, my client then began to defend himself. Um, she called the police as a, the police as a result of being angry with him for leaving. Um, this and probably as a result of her assaulting her and battering her. But, you know, who's counting? Second aggravated assault is a situation where he was having a heated discussion um, with his girlfriend. Um, another driver, a truck driver who doesn't live um, in the state of Atlanta um, intervenes um, and begins to strike Mr. Gay. Mr. Gay then begins to defend himself um, in that case as well. Um, judge. We believe that Mr. Gay is an excellent candidate for bond um, in terms of these cases. Uh, what we would ask for in this case, Judge, is uh, $10,000 on both aggravated assaults for a total of 20. It was a heated discussion. Right. Ms. Broderick. Yeah. It was a heated discussion to the point where some other truck driver thought he needed to intervene. We call that assault and battery. Uh, um, the fact that Mr. Gay has three FTAs, he has... Um, I believe two open cases and he was on probation at the time that both of these offenses took place. Um, we believe that there should be um, a bond that ensures that we have compliance with the terms of the court. Um, it's clear that there's an opportunity for him to uh, reoffend and we're actually asking for 50,000 on each aggravated assault and 10,000 on the battery. Uh, Mr. Bernard, is that a Fulton County address he's going to be living at? Yes, Judge. He'll be staying um, with his sister. 
his his entire family is from Fulton County, the city of Atlanta. Um, he'll be staying with his sister. Okay, is that Wellington Walk? Um, I believe so, but I'd have to double check with him uh, to see. All right, position 11, no drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. Stay away from 3900 Fulton Industrial Boulevard. No further contact with Joshua Allen. And no weapons, sir, that also means rocks, pieces of cement, anything like that that you may or may not hit somebody over the head with, allegedly. Uh, you're going to have an ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew. Court, lawyer, medical, and employment, as long as you supply the name of your employer, proof of employment. Uh, scheduled exact location you'll be working. Turn that over to Mr. Bernard and to the ankle monitoring company so they can, um, if you don't do that, sir, they'll charge, they will um, revoke your bond. 10,000 on each count. Position 12, no drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons, no further contact with Jessica Lamar. Stay away from 3804 of Martin Luther King Jr. Drive. You're going to have an ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew except for court, lawyer, medical, and employment. Supply the name of your employer, proof of employment schedule, and the exact location you'll be working. Supply that to the Ankle Monitoring Company and to Mr. Bernard. He'll supply that to the state. $15,000 on that. Best of luck to you, sir. You can leave the booth. Thank you, Judge. That completes my business. May I be excused? Yes, sir. Have a good evening. Thanks. All right, ACDC, do we have uh, Rasan Hutchinson? No, here she comes. I think we got Mr. Best, uh, Mr. Weiner. <laughs> Yes, Your Honor. All right. That's position one on the add-on, Bostic. 22CP215055. Rasan Hutchinson, 60 days without indictment. No bond as of December 31st. Serious injury by vehicle. Driving homicide by vehicle. First degree driving, speeding, and reckless driving. Preach. Rob. You're waiting for me, Judge? Waiting on Bostic. Okay. Five prior arrests, two misdemeanors. One being an 06 DUI, nothing further. Go ahead, Mr. B uh, Weiner. Uh, Judge, the only prior conviction is an 06 DUI. Uh, there were co-defendants, he and another gentleman that were charged on this. For some reason, the co-defendant got a $15,000 bond, and my client was denied bond. They came in front of the court um, two days apart. Um, he's 49 years old, lives here with his mother. His mother is in Grady Hospital. She tried to get on the call, but she could not figure out how to do it with her phone call. She was attacked by wild dogs. She's the only child. Um, judge, this is a bondable offense. We would ask the court to consider giving him the same bond that the co-defendant received. Wait, mom was attacked by wild dogs while trying to come in here? That's a new one. And um, he lives at the Riverdale address with his mother, and she needs him there to take care of him. Uh, what's his co-defendant's name, Mr. Weiner? I'm going to give it to you. Wait one second, Judge. Keith Smith Keith. and the uh, release date was uh, booking numbers 2214365 should be attached to the motion. Right. Go ahead, Ms. Broderick. Your Honor, um, our victim's advocate has had contact with the victim's mother, who, um, of course, obviously opposes bond. We understand that, um, you know, that's a right to um, have a bond discussion and have bond um, addressed. Based on the nature of this offense, Your Honor, we are actually asking that um, there be a $25,000 bond for each count. Judge, the only thing I'm going to say is he should not be treated any different than the co-defendant. Um, the behavior is they were both allegedly speeding, and they cannot figure out who caused the accident that caused the death of the victim. So we would ask the mm, I'm I'm leaning I'm leaning towards it's your client. Court to consider giving him the same bond. I'm trying to find his bond. It was his because this one has four counts. I think the other person had at least three counts. I'm looking at the bond 
information. It should be attached to my motion there, Judge, okay. as part of uh, what we filed. There was a serious injury, driving, uh, speeding, reckless driving. Oh, it's the same four counts. And they gave him 15,000 surety and um, original bonds on the others. All right, no drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. No further contact with the family of Mondravius, M-O-N-D-R-E-V-I-O-U-S, Lewis. It's alleged he was going 135 miles an hour, so there'll be no driving during the pendency of this. Okay, so in, in liability terms, I'd call that joint and severable. They, 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 you know, you engage in a race. This is, this is the foreseeable outcome. You're both guilty of sin. In this case, unless the bond is modified. I think that's your point anyway. You have an ankle monitor paid for by the county with that 24-hour curfew, court, lawyer, medical, work. As long as he supplies the name of his employer, proof of employment, scheduled, exact location he'll be working. And since his mother's ill, he's the only child. He can also, um, as long as he supplies when he's going to a medical appointment with her, he could take her to her medical appointments. He's going to stay out of Fulton County unless he's here for court, see his lawyer, or if his mother has medical appointments. If they took her to Grady, then he can. Ha he may have to go back to Grady so he can take her there. Thank he's you. not returned Lord for Lord any Lord other Lord. reason. You mean he can ride with her? Right, he can ride with her. Yeah, he can't drive, so he can ride with her. All right. We got 10,000, 15,000, 5,000, and 5,000. 10, 15, 5, and 5. That ankle monitor is going to be paid for by the county, sir. Best of luck to you. Stay out of Polk County unless you're a quarter to see your lawyer. Or like I said, you can ride with your mother. Best of luck to you, sir. Judge, is that a total 35000 I'm just trying to make sure I understand what it is. Yes, sir, it is. Okay. Thank you, Judge. All right. Best of luck to you, sir. Thank, Thank you, you ACDC. You're welcome. Uh, Michael Bateman. So do we have uh, Mr. Jerome yet? No, not yet. What about Mr. Blevins? Let's see, do we have uh, Freddie yes. Caldwell? All right, Mr. Blevins, you ready? Yes, Judge. That's position 5, Bostick 22, CP 214169, 97 days without indictment, no bond as of November the 23rd. Possession of cocaine with intent to distribute, possession of cocaine, VGCSA, possession of Schedule 1 or 2 with intent to distribute, possession, manufacture, distribution, sale of marijuana. We've got 6.4 6 .4 grams of coke, 15.3 grams of crack, 58 pills, and 48.5 grams of weed. Free trial. And the other case was a uh, decline to prosecute, Mr. Blevin, so this is the only one. Yes, Go ahead, Boston. Yeah, quite a stash. Boston. Thank you, Camarie. Oh, I was talking. Golden girl. 13 prior arrests, very old trafficking, uh, prior cocaine with the intent, 2012, purchase, manufacturing, sale, prior, another cocaine with the intent, manufacturing, Marijuana with the intent, open case and pop for trafficking and cocaine, two counts, scheduled two, and controlled substance with the intent to distribute three counts, nothing further. All right, go ahead, Mr. Blevins. Uh, thank you, Judge. Uh, Mr. Call was 54 years old. He's um, a, a lifelong resident of Atlanta. Uh, he has lived at the same address his, most of his life, uh, 210 Wadley Street in Atlanta, Georgia. He's been delivering drugs to uh, thank thankful consumers for a long time here in Atlanta. Um, the other case, position six, was dismissed after preliminary hearing, uh, where I believe this is going to affect this case is before your honor. Uh, we'd ask for a reasonable bond on it, Judge. Um, the officer in that case, position six, testified they did a control by Mr. Caldwell when he was in the Cobb County Jail, uh, which led to the dismissal of that warrant. And he was arrested on a warrant on the second case. So we asked for a reasonable bond on the counts. All right. Go ahead, Ms. Broderick. No, no, we are actually asking for 15000 on each count based on the fact that um, this defendant actually has previous history of similar um, offenses, Your Honor. And there appears to be a Kyle County hold. All right, no drugs, no prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. You have an ankle monitor. Is he going to live in Fulton County, Mr. Blevins? Yes, ma'am. 
All right. Uh, you got an income under paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew, court, lawyer, medical, and employment. As long as you supply the name of your employer, proof of employment, a schedule, the exact location you're going to be working, sir. Uh, you'll have 48 hours to have that ankle monitor placed on your ankle since there's a hold once you get released that hold. 48 hours, sir, to have that placed on your ankle. Let's see. Great. Right, 15, 10, 10, and 15. 15, 10, 10, and 15. Best of luck to you, sir. You can leave the booth. Thank you, Mr. Blevins. Thank you, Justice. All I have might be excused. Yes, sir. Thank you. So, Ms. Rhonda, do you know Thomas Holmes was indicted? Yes, Your Honor, I'm aware. Okay, just, just making sure, okay? Yes, thank you. And we have uh, Dennis Murphy here? Yes, Judge. I got Mr. Murphy. 15. Right, it looks like he is in Henry County. It, it was my understanding I've been in communication with the fiancé that he was returned, but he's back in Fulton. Uh, well, they say he's in, they say he's not there. Judge, I can just have a lieutenant check just to make sure. And does he have a location on where he was being housed in Fulton? I'm not sure. I believe he was in Henry for several days. I, I'm, uh, let me let me look real quick. To see, I had visited him several times there. Okay, we're going to go to the next one. Let's see. Did Judge, we'll just have um, the jail just check I, just to make sure why he's researching. Uh, all right, what about Anthony Jones? Is Kyra Lynn here? Kyra Lynn. <laughs> Kyra Lynn, turn the camera on. Yay, Fulton. That's an indictment. That's an indicted case, people. We'll come back when your lawyer uh, gets back on. What about... Shannon Hudson. All right, Ms. Rondon. That's position one, Bostic 2-2, two, two, CP 213-193. Shannon Hudson, 137 days without indictment. No bond as of October the 15th. Criminal damage to property, first degree, and simple battery. Preach trial. In regards to Mr. Hudson, multi-state offender, 20 in Georgia, arrested in Nevada and South Carolina, kind of has a hold. Um, 2017 controlled substance, currently on probation, 19SC166527, marijuana with intent, scheduled four, firearm, during firearm, by scheduled one, also cocaine, sentence 9, 20, 12, 19 for five years, open case, in yes, judicial sir. hold with Judge Cox, 16SC142. Henry County, we need to check on someone that the attorney's attorney saying the attorney's saying he's there. Go ahead, uh, Miss Rhonda. Sorry. So he's a career criminal and all around bad guy. Okay, sorry. Uh, was pretrial done? He finished Bostick, or did you just pause? Pause. He has another open case. Twenty three SC one eight five seven nine five aggravated assault two counts filed I'm doing something battery filed by. Nothing further. All right. Go ahead, Ms. Rhonda. Okay. Mr. Hudson is 32 years old. Yes. He is a lifelong resident of the Atlanta area. His entire family lives here, including his aunt, sister, and his two kids who are four years old and one years old. He does have a good address. That is 558 Plainville Drive Southwest yeah. here in Atlanta where he'd be able to live with his aunt, Tawana Hudson. Um, he does receive disability checks due to um, medical issues and a previous gunshot wound. So we would be asking for a fairly low bond in this case because of his financial status. Um, for the criminal damage to property first, we would be asking for $5,000. And for simple battery, we would be asking for $1,000. Um, as Your Honor stated, Mr. Hudson has been in for over 90 days without indictment, and so he is entitled to bond at this point. All right. Ms. Broderick? Your Honor, um, the fact that um, the 
Defendant also has other open cases, which include um, aggravated assault. Um, and the fact that the victim in this case shares a child with the defendant. Um, I believe there was a firearm that was involved. Um, the victim shares a child. That's an awkward phrasing. I, I mean, I think I get what they mean, but okay. We believe that 50,000 uh, for the simple battery because of the nature of their relationship and um, 5,000 for the criminal damage are sufficient. So the simple battery is a misdemeanor. It looks like he, it says he choked her. So, I mean, are you ch obviously going to change that? Your Honor, um, that is a possibility once the um, the case is indicted that the allegations could be changed, but or, sorry, that the charges could be changed. But based on the fact that um, they have a relationship, they have a child together, um, they're po he poses a significant risk to the victim. And so we just want to make sure that we don't have any um, issues of um, reoffending or intimidating the victim. All right, no drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. No further contact with Monique, M-O-N-I-Q-U-E, Upshaw, U-P-S-H-A-W. Stay away from 1177 Joseph E. Boone Boulevard. You're going to have an ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew, except for court, lawyer, medical, and employment. You have to supply the name of your employer, proof of employment, a schedule, and the exact location you're going to be working, sir. You have to supply that to Ms. Rondon and to the ankle monitoring company. And I'm sorry, Your Honor, did you say uh, no further contact? Yes, ma'am, I did. No further contact with Monique Upshaw. I'm just checking one thing here to see who. <laughs> Which is good stuff. Your Honor, may I say something about this case? Okay. Um, we have the victim listed as a Jessica Weems. Um, Miss Weems is the alleged victim in the indicted case. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Thank yeah, you. That's what I was checking. That was a completely different case. All right, so I've got 15 on count one, and I think it's going to be upgraded, so 25000 on count two. That ankle monitor be paid for by the county, sir. Best of luck to you, sir. You can leave the booth. Well, there you have it. Some serious ones. Some serious ones in Fulton County tonight. Well, that, that was fun. It was short, but... The soft sit rolling into to Judge Bryant's courtroom and her refusing to talk to him because he won't do the name thing. She's like, all right, you're not here. You're not here and you're already in custody. So just, I don't know. <laughs> Go back to your cell. We'll do whatever you want to do. But but the, the case I called, the guy's not here. That was fun. And, of course, Billy Jack Daniels coming back. That That was, that was good times. I, I wish I had time to uh, to grab it, and I don't even know I don't even know what video it is. But th the prior video with Billy Jack Daniels sitting in a lawn chair telling telling Judge Webster to put him in jail is fantastic. <laughs> He's like, "Yeah, just just I'll report on Friday. How's that? How's that grab you?" And then, of course, it's always, always good times with uh, with Judge Manning. I, I didn't have time to uh, edit that the way I'd like to, but you know, it was it was still a lot of fun. Thank you all for coming out. I appreciate it. I will see you all soon.